Hey guys, so the time has finally come to do my room tour video. People have been asking for this a long time and I have just procrastinated it because <laughs> sometimes my comic room is together and sometimes it's just in a complete state of disarray. So I've cleaned it up. It's time. It's good. It's gonna be. Let's do it. My room tour video. Okay, so the first stop of the comic book room that's most important is my Wonder Wall. And this is the point where I would play the song Wonderwall, but definite copyright issues, so I will not be doing that. <laughs> um, so basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm, you know, I'm a huge, huge Wonder Woman fan, and I needed to honor that. And also, I had so many prints that they had to go somewhere. So they've just occupied this space, um, which means I should probably stop buying Wonder Woman prints. But um, fat chance. So moving along is the figure bookshelf. <laughs> so here we go. So most of this is like anime figures. A lot of my comic book figures go on the bookshelf. Um, so we have my pot figures at the top, including my Lena Inverse Nendroid. A lot of Mass Effect and Horizon Zero Dawn and video game stuff. And then we basically have four full shelves of One Piece. Um, Frankie's first, of course. My main man, my love, my boy. Um, and then also my ladies, my One Piece ladies. A lot of these are Glitters and Glamours figures. So I think this whole line... Oh, God! <laughs> this is why there's like a video of me dropping figures at first. So a lot of this whole line is Glitters and Glamours. Now, luckily, I bought a lot of these while I was in Japan for like... 13 bucks, but if you see them in America, usually they go for about 40. I also have two POPs that's the Portrait of Pirates figures. These are a little more expensive, but again, um, one of these was donated by a friend. This one I was able to get in Japan for maybe even just $40. I usually wait and buy a lot of them later. Um, we also have some uh, Q Posket figures and a POP Nico Robin. And then we have another Frankie shelf. Now, this is kind of an amalgamation of different figure lines. This one is absolutely. 100% a ripoff of <laughs> the anniversary figure. It's not the real one, but I did spend uh, an obnoxious amount of money on it for no reason. <laughs> um, you know, impulses and all that. Um, so, <clears throat> we have my fourth One Piece shelf. Now, this is kind of a random assortment of figures. So, we've got a lot of smaller figures. We have a fi the Luffy figure that I won at uh, the One Piece store in Tokyo. I did a lottery, I got the top prize, and actually um, <laughs> Tina had also won the same figure a week before, so very rare chance that we would pick it up, but we did. And my th uh, the highlight of my shelf for me is my three senior pinks, because I love him. I love this weird baby man. Now, of course, <laughs> the final shelf is just our kind of random <laughs> all figures. Um, some of these are my fiance, some of these are mine. Uh, usually a lot of the smaller figures, we've got some Naruto, you know, Power Rangers, Gundam, our Don Quixote plush, and a little bit of Gurren Lagann, of course, because Gurren Lagann is my favorite. And we also have our, like, holder of figure parts. <laughs> so it is a little bit random. But before we walk away from the shelf, one thing I do want to show up here with my Frankie shelf is this figure. So I picked this up in China. Um, you know, it's obviously a knockoff, of course, but the reason why I picked this up is you, you see a lot of figures that are knockoffs of actual Japanese line figures, like from Bam Presto or Madhouse, but this one isn't a knockoff of anything. It's just is what it is. Um, so I, I, I knew I had to get it. Uh, and it, I think he's really cute. I've never seen anything else like him, so I'm pretty good price too. I think I only paid maybe 50 bucks? I'm not exactly sure. I know I just kind of threw you in at him, so it was it was pretty cool. And also I didn't know how to say Frankie in Chinese, so I was just like, ah, oh, this guy. Thanks. <laughs> and also, um, so the, over here on this wall is more of my like non-comic book prints. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. I have some Sui Coden prints, um, a lot of One Piece. 
uh, prints that I really, really love. We got some Buffy, Sailor Moon, a lot of Frankie, of course. <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, I love Nico Robin. Um, I do have one Naruto print, which is unlike me, but <laughs> I love this artist right here, and there was a good deal, so I had to. And right below uh, my prints is my, basically, I guess my reading area where the magic happens. Uh, so this is a kotatsu. So in the winter time when it gets cold, we're almost there. It's a Japanese heated table. So we put like a quilt over it and then a, like a blanket on the bottom and it just is heated up. So that's my big reading time of the year. We spend all, all of our time like sitting here with coffee and hot chocolate and just reading or, you know, playing Switch. <laughs> And here's Moose, the most important part of my room. <laughs> um, so over here we have my Strangers in Paradise gallery edition. Now this is something I highlighted after C2E2, and it's too big to film any of my shelves, but it's so worth it. So it gets its own special place. Now I, this is probably the only book I'll open up and show you guys from my collection today, but I mean, this is... I think this might be my favorite book I have in my collection. Absolutely beautiful. And I'd love to find a better way to kind of um, open this and display the art. I'm not entirely sure the best way to do that without, you know, potentially harming the book. But uh, this is, oh, it's so pretty. Like, look at this line work. It's amazing. And the size, like, I would love to see uh, more artists do something like this. It's really heavy. <laughs> Put this back. Oh gosh. Oh no. Are you okay? Okay. And um, we also have down here, uh, I'll just pick up a few. I keep all of my floppies in little boxes like this. So down here is the, the Titans collection box. So from some of you who've been watching me in the show know that I am still collecting the Titans, this came out in 99. Um, it was never collected, so I'm currently on a quest to collect them all and then custom bind them. And I'm almost done, I think I'm only missing like four or five issues. So, almost there. <laughs> and then I uh, hope they can do a video about like that process when it comes to binding sing single issues. Okay, so we have the DC area of the room. Now this is probably the most um, collected part of my collection. Uh, I'm a DC fan first, <laughs> so I tend to buy a lot more DC than I do of any other publisher. So um, up at, on the top we have some of our figures. Now I have Hulk over here. He's not DC, I know that, but that's where some of the figures are. <laughs> so we got uh, Hulk and Wonder Woman and Batgirl. Um, this Batgirl is actually wicked broken. I fixed it, but I've been wanting to get her for a while, so I'm so glad that I have her. Uh, so the top two shelves are just uh, DC trade paperbacks. Um, I do my best to put them alphabetically first and then chronologically, um, which is, can be a little bit difficult. <laughs> and by chronologically, I don't exactly mean when they the time period, but like when they came out, you know, so I put obviously New 52 before Rebirth, um, etc. Right? Uh, it makes me, I love, I love this area of my shelf. The only bummer is that it looks like a whole ass mess. <laughs> Just the way that DC collects their books. It's not the prettiest part of my shelf. Um, and we're almost getting full. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out of uh, room for figures. And something that you'll see in my shelf, I'm a newer collector, I've been collecting for about a like, couple years. So my shelf isn't completely full as some other collectors are, but I like it to look full. So I always find ways to fill that space, whether it be with figures or with highlighting a certain book uh, or issue um, of a series or an artwork or something. So yeah, we have my first two. The first two shelves are just random DC trade paperbacks. Um, and then we have the Wonder Woman shelf. So I, again, I highlight Wonder Woman so she gets her own shelf. 
and I do my best to <laughs> kind of do this chronologically. Um, to the best of my ability, it doesn't always work. Um, and I still have a lot more to get to because I am, um, you know, I've got some of John Byrne. I don't have the first volume of Greg Rucka's run, even though I've read it. Um, there's a couple of omnibuses I don't have. And as you can see, too, I just have the trades for New 52 and for Rebirth. I haven't upgraded to omnibuses or deluxe editions for her yet. I probably will. Um, for me, I just I was just eager to go ahead and read the story, so I didn't, you know, omnibus or hardcover wait for those. So I think I'll probably wait for a good deal and then upgrade, but I haven't decided how I want to do that. Um, one of the bummers is because Wonder Woman, there is Absolute and an omnibus for Azarello's run, but then it would leave me with having um, these two trades by Meredith Finch by themselves. So... I like it better all together in reading order. So if there's an omnibus that collected just all the New 52 run, I think I'd be more into that than, you know, having part of it collected. Although those absolutes look very nice. And the pride of the shelf, my Gotham City Garage Wonder Woman. I love this figure so much. The series is just okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, Gotham City Garage is just okay, but this figure is beautiful. I used to go into our local comic book store just to go look at her and say hi as if she's a real person. And so I would come into the store and just look at this figure always, all the time. And again, my, my fiance bought it for me, so thank you. <laughs> Thanks for spoiling me with figures, I really appreciate it. Uh, and then we have my DC hardcover shelf. And I'm still missing a lot of these. Uh, right now it's just, um, because I do have an omnibus section too, but this is just my deluxe, re like, rebirth section for DC, basically. Um, and of course, like, the bait of my existence is the screen arrow. DC, what the hell? What the hell? I love you. Stop doing this to me, please. Uh, but I love these books. And I'm still missing a lot. Like, I still need to finish collecting Batman and Detective Comics and Flash, oh, all of them, basically. Um, and get some more of the Harley Quinn. And again, you'll see I don't have Wonder Woman because I'm still waiting to pick that up. I did just add um, Young Justice by Wonder Comics to this shelf. Um, I guess I just have to get over the fact that, you know, this shelf isn't going to look uniform anymore since the Rebirth look has changed, right? We're not actually in Rebirth anymore, so I just have to accept that if Deluxe Editions are coming out, they're not going to look like this, so the beautiful shelf is over. This nice white and blue. It's over now. Now again, so I talked before about empty space and then putting something there to highlight, you know, just to fill the space up and make it look really nice. So I have my own little booster gold part of the shelf. So in here I've got, um, this is the Jeff Johns run, Dan Durgan's, um, it, volumes one and two. That is a 52 pickup. And back here we have blue and gold and of course, booster and blue pop figures. So originally I just had oh, these two together, but then my friend Lee got Heroes in Crisis number nine signed by uh, Tom King and Clayman for me. Now everybody knows that I hate this series so much, but he did get him to sign and apologize to me about Ray Harper. So thanks Lee and thanks Tom King. But I still love seeing Booster Gold, so I thought I'd highlight that beautiful signed copy right here. Okay, so the next two shelves are more um, just kind of empty space, but I use it to highlight different uh, single issues that I have. So on this one I have um, three different issues that I had signed by the Benson Sisters. Um, a couple of their run from Back on the Birds of Prey, and also um, the issue of Green Arrow, which has Roy Harper's funeral. Uh, I loved meeting them, by the way. They're so sweet. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And I was so excited, too, because these two variants are hard to find by a Japanese artist, and I love them. It's more anime style to Back on Birds of Prey. And then also getting this, um, you know, Roy Harper's funeral signed by them really meant, me, meant a lot to me, because they wrote Maddie, Roy Harper Lives, and... <laughs> Um, Arsenal Forever, and I really appreciate it. And I got these uh, two very cute DC Artist Alley figures of Supergirl and Batgirl. I still need to get Wonder Woman and Hot Girl, but I'm not in any rush. They're each $60, so I'm trying not to, like, 
completely throw my wallet away. And I also have my Arsenal shelf. So if you haven't guessed, uh, I have a few different favorite characters. And one of them is Roy Harper, love of my life, my husband, my man. And so we have a little, a little kind of like shrine to him right here. Uh, it's not the only place I highlight Roy in this room. But we have a few of his older, just like Arsenal only um, mini series or issues. So we have Arsenal where he, um, it's like Fall of a Titan special. We have uh, the Arsenal only series that came out in uh, 98, which the art is super weird. <laughs> and the Rise of Arsenal, um, where he lost his arm. And we have a couple little figures. There's not many Arsenal figures out there, but we do have um, Arsenal from the Arrow Show and uh, the New 52 uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws. Okay, so in our middle section, we have um, all of my DC omnibuses, but also um, a few of like my thicker trays because I want them together. Um, and I don't have many, really. <laughs> Super Sons, Infinite Crisis. Harley Quinn and Gotham City Sirens, The Authority, uh, New Teen Titans Omnibus Volume 1. I will be getting the rest of those. Uh, volume 1 of Red Hood and the Outlaws. Say what you want about that series. I don't care. I love it. So, too bad. Um, and this used to just be a uh, New 52 Futures End kind of shelf, but since I have Batman Eternal Omnibus, that had to go somewhere. So... That's what's here right now. I still have a little bit of room to grow, but not much. Um, then I have my Donna Troy shelf. <laughs> There's not much for her out there, but um, I was able to get a, a couple of different figures. Uh, one bust, I don't know when this came out, probably over 10 years ago, uh, as well as the Super Best Friends Forever Donna Troy from the cartoon. And I also have, which issue is this? Issue number 50 of the new Titans signed by um, Marv Wolfman and George Perez. So I'm very excited about that. And this is Who is Wonder Girl Part 1 of 4. You know, she's my favorite, so I wanted to make sure I got something signed of hers. So, then my second Sideshow figure, I had... I knew I had to have this from the second I saw her, and I made monthly payments forever. And she's finally here, and she's beautiful. Uh, I can't tell too much, but she does have a light-up base. I still need to cut into the bookshelf in order to have that work. But, um, she's so beautiful. Bless. Uh, it's another Sideshow premium format, like the Red Sonya that I have. And then another miscellaneous Wonder Woman figure shelf. These are for my tiny er, figures. Uh, we have some Pop, some Cryptozoic, some Rock Candy, uh, some cute Posca and the Wonder Woman Nendroid. I also picked up one of those Wonder Woman Dr. Peppers from the movie, and I haven't opened it since the movie came out. Uh, and I probably should throw that away. I don't really know how good that is as a collector's item, but I have it. Uh, I also have my Terry Moore shelf. I've got the soft covers uh, for the Strangers in Paradise omnibus. Uh, the soft cover for the Rachel Rising omnibus, and then the hard covers from for. Motor Girl and For Strangers in Paradise 25. And actually, I think uh, these three are all signed by Terry. Commercial break time. So this episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online resource for new graphic novels and collect editions for up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And also check out their bargain bin because it, sometimes they have even greater deals for up to 90% off. You're not helping. Are you part of this ad? Are you here to tell them about CheapGraphicNovels.com? Tell them about CheapGraphicNovels.com! Robin, where do you buy your books? <laughs> so, <laughs> Cheap Graphic Novels is running a deal, a special promotion for all you minties out there. If you're a first time customer, let them know you're referred by us near mint condition at checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This is available to U.S. customers only. Not cats. What are you going to order from CheapGraphicNovels.com, Robin? Now, our last part of the main shelf. 
Um, up here we have a, couple, a few more just random um, issues that I like. That's a Booster Gold, Bombshells United number one, which I bought because Donna's on the cover, and um, a variant of Superman that I really like. So my top shelf um, is supposed to be just for the Image Deluxe Editions, but... I had just gotten the Tea Dragon Festival, which is, I think, yeah, it's uh, published by Oni Press, but it's too tall for any of my other shelves, so I guess I need to rethink this. Um, but I do intend on buying a lot more Image Deluxe Editions. I really like them. I like that they're all the same height. Um, one downside is that I had turned my Saga number three around uh, to kind of highlight it on my shelf, because I always talk about filling up the shelves, right? and it fell off and totally wrecked the book. So, looks like I'm buying another Sokka uh, <laughs> Deluxe Volume 3 again. Be careful with your shelves, guys. Don't be like me. And then I have only have two Marvel shelves. <laughs> I've kind of talked about this on the show a lot. I read a lot of Marvel digitally, um, like on Marvel Unlimited, but I don't have a lot of... I don't have a lot of Marvel books in my collection. Um, they're just usually, oh, I don't know, usually too expensive, I feel like, so I always wait to buy them on sale. Um, so I have only, have, I only have a, a few different trade series, and a lot of things I'm just waiting to buy the omnibus for, so I don't buy the trades, or even the shorter hardcovers. And some of them are just random. Of course I've got A-Force, because that's not collected any bigger. Um, a lot of my ladies stuff, so like Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, Captain Marvel, Mockingbird, um, I have Guardians of the Galaxy, She-Hulk, uh, Unstoppable Wasp, of course, Vision, um, and then, you know, I've got my Mantis figure collection, the special variant, uh, for C2E2, for, uh, I guess this is a War of the Realms issue, and then I have my hardcover shelf for Marvel. And again, I don't have much. Um, I finally have Annihilation. Thank you, Marvel. And Annihilation Conquest, so now I can finally buy the rest of the Cosmic Saga. Uh, and then I have a few shorter hardcovers. So Hawkeye, Star Wars, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, Miss Marvel. Now a lot of these I got at a discount, um, or for free as a gift. So I do intend on buying more, like I do want to get Planet Hulk. Um, like I said, the rest of it, the uh, Cosmic Saga. And, you know, I, you know, there's some of the things that I want, like Daredevil and stuff, but I'm in no rush to finish these just yet. They're going to be there. Um, I'll focus on DC still, I think. And then if I read most of it digitally, that's fine. Then I have another just, like, decorative shelf. A Nova cover, because he's my favorite boy. Um, Justice League with art by Stepan Sejic. And there's also this Chinese book that I, comic book I had found when I was in China about this cat and a pug. I have a cat and a pug, so, you know, I had to do it. Okay, so then I have my non-Marvel and DC trades. So that basically is everything. Oni, Image, First Second, uh, Titan, IDW, you get the GIF. Um, so that's all of my trades that are not the big two. Um, and it, it's a random amalgamation that's not very pretty, but it is what it is. If I happen to collect more, uh, and I'm sure I will, I may switch this up, but it's all alphabetical. Uh, and then I put all of my non-DC Marvel hardcovers on the next shelf. Um, of course, you know, I've got my beautiful Lumberjanes, uh, Moon Shadow by Dark Horse. Now, I do have a Dark Horse hardcover shelf, but this is not the library size, so it goes down here. Um, and then I have a, I highlight the Hi-Fi Fight Club, which, uh, was renamed, um, Heavy Vinyl. But I love these covers, and I love this little book. At the bottom, I have my manga. And as you can see, I don't have much. Um, I had a lot more manga, and then I kind of did a Marie Kondo, and, you know, decided what was worth keeping and what wasn't. So, I kind of, like, got rid of everything, and I plan on building back up but focusing on series that mean the most to me or that have really nice deluxe or hardcover editions. So all the Naoki Urasawa and all the Jinji Ito I do plan on picking up. Uh, a recent thing that's my, I do want to show you all, 
Um, I did get a copy of Yotoden, uh, the, the manga for that. So Wrath of the Ninja, Yotoden is like my favorite. It's purely nostalgia. I know it's bad. I don't care. It's my favorite. I love her and I love this. And so I just ordered this from Mandarake. It came in this past week and it's so beautiful and I'm so excited. Uh, so I just want to show you that. But yeah, so it's a pretty small shelf for somebody who reads a lot of manga like me, but there's just so much manga and so I just read it digitally usually. Okay. Okay. So, um, so this skinny billy has a lot of different stuff on it. So at the top we have all of my Dark Horse library edition books. I only put this format up here. Uh, I do worry because I, I fully intend on buying more <laughs> Dark Horse library editions. So I'm not gonna, sh I'm not sure what I'm gonna do when I run out of space. Because as you see, I'm so, there's still two more of these Final Fantasy editions. Um, I will be getting the rest of Harold County. And I do want to get the rest of the Avatar library editions, but I do have all of the Dragon Age that's out so far. I feel like we're getting one more, because we're getting that new uh, Fenris book from Dragon Age. And we're coming to the best part, the Red Sonya section. So this is my Red Sonya figure um, from Sideshow. She's a premium format figure. And she's beautiful. I obsessed over this for months. And my wonderful fiance surprised me and got it for me for Christmas. Thank you. And I mean, she's just gorgeous. You wouldn't be able to tell exactly, but I did drop her while I was walking over to my new house. Cause I, we moved a few months ago and my, my new house isn't too far from my old house. I walked over and I dropped her and some of the pieces looked like they were going to the storm drain and Tina, my co-host dove in to grab the rest of the pieces. Luckily, she is such a sturdy figure that you wouldn't even know that there's parts missing. Uh, like a little bit of her axis broke in, uh, a few pieces of her hair fell off in the back, but I, I have kept everything, so if I wanna fix it, I can, but honestly, you wouldn't even know. She's gorgeous. And then we have the Red Sonya book section. So I'm still collecting more and more as you can see, I still don't have the rest of the omnibuses for Red Sonya, She Devil with the Sword. Um, but I do have a lot of the dynamite of some uh, Dark Horse. And this was uh, sent in to me by a listener, the Spider-Man Red Sonya book by Marvel, which is pretty cool. And he also sent me, oh God, no. Red Sonya, no. <laughs> I'll get her. It's okay. Go back there, thank you. And he had also sent me this really cool Red Sonya cup from 7-Eleven. It's very vintage and cool. Like how, how sweet is that? I really appreciate Red Sonya fans. Red Sonya is my number one dynamite girl. So she deserves her own shelf. It will not be shared with any other dynamite girls. Um, and I also have a couple of the floppies back here. I always like to buy nice variant covers and display them. So right now we have the Red Sonya Vampirella and Be Betty and Veronica. So I haven't really liked that series so far, but the covers are so good. Football player Red Sonya is amazing. So going down, uh, we had this kind of awkwardly sized shelf. So we just used it for um, the Teen Titans variant with the OG Teen Titans and the Rock Band, which I love. This is a Darwin Cook um, variant and it fits perfectly. So it doesn't match the rest of the theme of the shelf, but I don't care. And then next we have all of our Buffyverse books. So I'm still missing a few. I haven't gotten the newest Buffy and Angel releases. Now I'm not sure what I'm gonna do when the Legacy Edition comes out. I plan on buying those too, but I don't know what happens to my shelf. <laughs> when that happens, am I gonna have room? I don't know. So I've gotta really figure out how this is gonna go. Um, but I have all my Buffy Library Editions up here and all the Buffyverse things up here. So we've got Buffy, um, and then we've got the season um, 11, uh, Willow, Giles, I also put Joss Whedon's Frey up here, and of course a couple of rock candy figures. And down here is all of the like non-Buffy but Buffyverse stuff. So we have uh, Angel After the Fall, this um, is after this, the show ends. Then Angel and Faith Library Editions, as well as uh, the continuing seasons of Angel and Faith and Angel. And I also have the Spike books. And of course the 
Buffy the Vampire Slayer Tales book. I love these skinny billies from Ikea. They're so great. And it's a great way to kind of diversify your collection and how it all looks. Okay, so um, down here is my little Suicoden Sanctuary. Suicoden is my favorite video game series, so I'm a big collector. And honestly, my collection is still small compared to a lot of people that I know. Um, but I have a lot of uh, Suicoden, um, a Suicoden manga, uh, Japanese game guides, uh, Suicoden like magazines, kind of. Add a cute little like bookmarks and like special editions and stuff, as well as uh, the fan art book. I only have two Sui Coden figures. Omar has more than me, so petition him to give me his Sui Coden figures because I'm the bigger fan and I deserve them. And we're best friends, so I only have uh, Chris and Nash from Sui Coden three, but there's a few more figures of all the other main characters. And then down here I have some of my Japanese. Um, and English uh, Suicoden games. I like to buy them both in Japanese and English. I also have Suicoden card games, which never came out here, um, as well as the PSP game that we never got, and the remap, well, not only remastered, but uh, yeah, I guess remastered a little bit, uh, Suicoden 1 and 2 uh, joint release for PSP. You can mind diagonally in that one, so it's a pretty big deal. Um, and some, uh, a few mis miscellaneous prints. It's not that well put together right now. Um, and then down here, like my other one, I have just all of my floppies. And this is super random. Some of this is from, co from Free Comic Book Day. Some of this is just, um, you know, issues that, whose art I liked or whatever. Okay. Ugh. Uh, so my final wall, we have my comic book walls. This is all my comic book prints and art. Um, we've got Marvel, we've got DC. Um, we've got a mix of things. And then we also have um, some more Red Sonja up here. One video game print did make it up here, but it just happened to fit really well with the aesthetic. So we have do a Horizon print. And we also have my, I guess, Arsa wall. <laughs> Um, with my Roy Harper covers and my Roy Harper Donna Troy commission from Comfort and Adam. And of course my Sunstone um, calendar by Shevin Sedgwick, which is so beautiful. October's great so far. So that is the majority of my comic book room, but I do, I get asked about this a lot <laughs> in my videos. Like, Maddie, what's that, you know, shining thing behind you? whenever I do a live stream, and that is the Rose of Versailles pachinko machine. This is my fiance's. He found it at a peddler's mall for like 20 bucks, which is insane. Uh, so I did want to show you guys this because I get asked about this all the time. So this is my treat to you. It's very loud and I can't guarantee we'll even get like the animations, but I will show you. If you get a good score, you're supposed to get like a cool animation in here. So. Let's try it out. Whoa! That's rude. Oh, come on. You can... Can I tilt it?
It's that bad. Come on, Oscar. Oh, I guess that's it. Well, you got to see it. <laughs> uh, this is a big, like, party pleaser in our house. It's pretty fun, so. Here it is. Oh, wait. I gotta show you the board games real quick. Come on with me. Oh, okay, hey. <laughs> All right, so back in this mess is my board game closet. So if you look in here, <laughs> you'll have to walk in before me because we can't fit both of us. Um, yeah, it's about, we have a lot of different games. Dead of Winter's a big one, Betrayal. Um, we did get the new Buffy game, Codenames. We have a bunch of longer games and shorter games, but I wanted to give you a quick look at our different um, shelves. Of course, you know, classics like One Night Ultimate Werewolf. And um, we have a few Final Fantasy, you know, card games and stuff. But our big ones are the ones on this bottom shelf. We play Mansions of Madness a lot, Smash Up, the DC deck building game. Five Minute Marvel and Five Minute Dungeon are really popular with us. Um, and of course, Tea Dragon Society card game too. I'm glad to see comics getting into more card games, too. So, yeah. You have seen it all. Uh, that is my whole tour. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but it seems like it's going to be pretty long. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, I can do a follow-up video again next year. Uh, let me know if you have a similar setup or if there's anything that you would like to see more of, I guess. Um, thanks for joining me finally. I finally did the room tour video. Uh, don't forget to like this video, uh, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, we do do a lot of content. Of course, we have a we have some merch through Redbubble and a Patreon too, so if you uh, feel like supporting us, check those out. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be new men. Bye guys. <laughs>